Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And when I did my review of the Raspberry Pi 4, I didn't get a chance to demonstrate how the dual monitor support works. So in this video, I want to fix that and I want to give you a quick demo and guided tour of how you can use two monitors with the Raspberry Pi 4. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So in terms of the setup, it's quite simple. This is the power cable, the USB-C power cable. And here are the two HDMI cables, which of course HDMI micro uh, connectors. And I've got two extension cables here that lead out to full HDMI connectors. And you just have to be careful. There is quite a bit of room here, but you have to be careful that the adapter you get has got enough space there. And I've got quite a bit, there's a couple of millimeters in between, so that worked out quite okay. And you connect those up and then power on the Pi. Okay, so the system is up and running. As you can see, there are two monitors. It's worth noting, you do need to have both monitors connected at boot up to get it to go into the dual monitor mode. If you connect it after boot up, you'll have to reboot for it to recognize that second monitor. So of course, normally if you'd have a window running, like say a terminal here, then of course you would move it around here in one window. But now with dual monitors, you can move it across to the other window. And no matter how many times I see this, whether it's on Windows, whether it's on Linux, whether it's on Mac OS, I always find that uh, quite a, a little amusing there. So there we go, we could stick over here a, a window like that and we could run HTOP on it, for example, to have that running monitoring the system as we go along. Now, there are a variety of different options available to you. So first of all, if you right hand click on the desktop and go to desktop preferences, there are some things you can do about the layout. So for example, here you can control the HDMI monitor one and we can say, okay, we'd like to see the documents folder on here. And here we can see the documents folder has appeared over here. Now HDMI two is controlled separately. So over here, there is not the documents folder. So if we click on here, we can get the documents folder to appear on the second monitor. And so in fact, you can control the appearance of these two monitors completely separately. For example, on the second monitor, I could even change uh, the background. So if we pick a different background image here and apply that, we're going to see that the background over here will change. So you've got two different backgrounds uh, on your monitors. And there are other things, for example, the taskbar, you could say, well, actually here it is normally up here. We could say, well, let's put it over on the second monitor. And now the taskbar with the menu and everything appears over there or we can put it back again. There's another trick with the taskbar that I will show you in a moment. So another thing you can do, you can go up here to the uh, start menu and then to preferences. You can run this program, screen configuration. And this program will allow you to say how the two HDMI monitors are organized. Now, you can of course swap their position so they are the other way around. But more importantly here, because you can see that my second monitor is slightly smaller, smaller resolution, you can actually change where it is relative at the top or the bottom. So now at the moment, when I go along the bottom here with my, let's see if I can do it with this uh, here. If I go along the bottom here, that appears to be the bottom there. But here at the top, you can see it's cut off a bit because it's actually smaller. So it's trying to say where relative should one be to the other. Now what I'm actually gonna do is move this up a bit to the top. And the reason for that is another little trick here, we click apply, uh, is that another little trick, if you go up here to the start menu and click right hand, click panel settings, now here it can say, where does the panel exist? Well, we can say it's on monitor two, we did that earlier on, but you can also say on all. And now it goes across from across both monitors with the clock being over here on the uh, second monitor and the start menu being over here on the first. If you had the screen layout wrong, so we lowered this down here a bit, then actually you'll notice you can't see the menu. So that's why I had to lower it there. So we actually wanna make sure the top part of the display is actually covered by a physical uh, monitor. Now, actually, I don't want that one to go back onto one like that. One other quick thing to mention, if you do go back down to desktop preferences here, on the second monitor, you can choose here that it doesn't just show the uh, desktop, it could show, for example, everything you've got in your home directory. And you'll notice here now, all those different icons have appeared here because it's now not showing you the desktop, it's showing you everything in your home directory. In fact, you can pick any place on the, on the file system that you want showed over there. So that could be quite interesting, particularly if you've got that second monitor and you want quick access to maybe some project files or something like that, you can get those to be desktop icons there automatically, automatically, that's the key point, of course, you can create icons, of course, but this is automatically 
on the second hand monitor. And really that's about it. I mean, it's designed to be simple. You plug it in and both monitors work. You've got a little bit of configuration that you can do so that you can actually set it up as you want it, including the background screens and so on, but that's about it. So as you can see, the Raspberry Pi 4 is a capable single board computer and having those two HDMI ports means you can plug in two monitors. And as you saw, it works basically straight out of the box. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget the new Speedtest G channel. And well, I guess that's it. I'll see you in the next one.